In today's video, I'm gonna take this old desk that is really too small to be used in a functional way anymore, and I'm gonna make it into two nightstands, and this makeover starts right now. I snagged this desk from a local thrift store for $40, which I feel like is a little bit too much for the shape that this is in. The finish is really, really failing. So I think I'm gonna end up sanding most of that back, but I love the shape of it. I could tell by the age of it that it was a solid wood piece, even though it's got a lot of veneer damage. I have turned a desk into nightstands before, but you might remember when I cut that top, it was <laughs> cardboard on the inside. I was pretty sure from the dovetail detailing on this and again just the age of it that I was gonna have a solid wood top. Like did people used to be this short? This is you could like a normal sized person could not sit at this desk. Maybe a kid. A short kid. So this desk is just way too small and too low to be functional as a desk anymore, but I wanted to give it new life and a second chance. So I'm gonna break it apart and make it into two nightstands. So there's a lot of work I have to do to do this. Um, it's gonna be different on every desk that you tackle, but just look for where the supports are and remove as much as you can. Once I removed all the screws that I could, I just took a mallet and started pounding down on this drawer and it came out pretty easily. From there, I just had a couple little decorative pieces I had to remove on the front and I just used my painter's tool and my mallet to pry those off. Now I'm ready to cut the top. So I grabbed a level to use as a guide and a couple of clamps. This is a really easy way to use your circular saw to get a straight cut. So I marked where I wanted to cut and then you need to account for the space from the edge of your circular saw to the blade. Once I got my guide in place, I just made some measurements to make sure it was equidistant from the edge. Once I had my guide all set up, I was ready to cut. You wanna make sure that you start the saw before you enter your wood and then make sure it completely stops before you remove it. I've been using power tools for a while now, but when I do something new, I still get very excited. I did it, I did it. I'm so excited. That first cut went really, really well. So I was pretty confident on this next one. I set up my guide the same way and then measured to make sure again, it was equidistant on each side. So now I have two nightstands, but the top is beveled and the cut I made is very straight. So I grabbed my router and found the bit that was gonna give me the same look that goes around the rest of the top and use the router to edge that out. This is my first time routing and it turned out so good. Um, in full disclosure, I practiced a lot on my scrap pieces before I actually took this to the nightstand. So you can see how squiggly that first one is. So I recommend practicing before you take it to your furniture. All that cutting made a huge mess. So I grabbed my vacuum and cleaned up a little bit before I moved on to removing the hardware. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to reuse this hardware because I have a damaged one and it's just gonna be too expensive to replace. And then I was afraid it was gonna look too different. So I'm gonna go a different route and put some different hardware on these. The next step was cleaning this with some Simple Green and my power scrubber. This thing was really, really dirty and I have a lot of repairs to make and I want my Bondo and my wood filler to stick. So it's really important that your surface is clean. And when you go to sand, it, it's just going to push a lot of dirt and grime and clog up your sandpaper. So it's always a good idea to clean and definitely vacuum the bottom if it's been in a storage unit because there's probably cobwebs down there. Once I was done cleaning, I rinsed it with some clean water and now I'm ready to start all the repairs. So I've got some pretty big gaping holes from where the desk was being held together and that's a pretty big hole. So I'm going to put a piece of scrap wood in here before I start with my all-purpose putty. I'm gonna be using some Bondo on here to make repairs to the veneer and all those holes. Bondo is a two-part putty, so you put the putty down and then it comes with a cream hardener that you mix in. Once you mix these together, this is going to get very hard, very fast, and helps fill in those really big gouges. You wanna work in small batches when you're using the Bondo because it does dry up pretty quickly, but the great part about that is that it's hard and ready to sand in 15 minutes. So I just kept mixing up new patches of putty and filled in all my gouges that I have. I also decided to fill in this detailing on the front. Don't hate me for that, but I just am not a fan of it being so sunken in. I was afraid that paint was gonna pull in here. So I filled those in as well as the hardware holes. And 
And then here comes the work. With Bondo, you have to sand a lot and a lot. So I used my power sander and a 150 grit sandpaper to smooth this all out. Once I saw how easy this finish was coming off, I decided to sand both nightstands back down to raw wood because I knew it wasn't gonna take me a long time and I just thought this would give me a better finish with the paint that I'm using. It really does well over raw wood. And as you can see, this furniture is really well loved, so that's gonna help remove some of the scratches that were in the existing finish. And while I would have loved to keep some natural wood tones in these nightstands, the veneer damage was just too bad on both of these to do anything but paint. So I sanded every surface I could with a 150 sandpaper and got my detail sander attachment on two to get into all the little corners and any details I couldn't reach, I just used a 220 sanding pad to scuff those up. That was a lot of sanding and once I was done, I used a tack cloth to remove all the dust. And then before I paint, I'm gonna measure my new hardware holes. I'm doing a single pull in the middle of each drawer so I'll be able to open these up when I'm spraying. I'll be leaving the drawers into spray, so I'm gonna tape off the inside so they can avoid getting overspray. So that was a lot of prep, taking this from a desk to nightstands and getting my surface all ready for paint. Because I have spent so much time prepping this furniture, I am not gonna be painting by hand. I'm gonna be using my sprayer today. This is my Wagner Flexio 3500 with my fine detail nozzle on here. You guys have seen me reach for the sprayer over and over again lately. I used to be really terrified of spraying, but the more I practice, the better I get at it. And I honestly, Honestly, rarely, rarely paint by hand anymore because this just goes so much faster. It gives me a really smooth finish. And the number one thing I hear from people is, isn't that really, really hard to clean? And it's actually not. It just detaches like this. And this is the unit that you clean so you're not worried about ruining your motor or getting water in your motor. And all of this stuff comes apart, separates really easily. And all of this is completely submergible in water. So with a little bit of soap and water, it cleans up in about five to 10 minutes. I'm excited about the paint I have for today because this is a new paint for me. This will be the first time I'm spraying it and the first time I'm using it. This is General Finishes Milk Paint. And don't let that name confuse you because I know you've seen milk paint before on my channel that is a powder that you mix together with water. This is not the same thing. This is actually an acrylic paint and it's water-based. It's really thin, so I think it's gonna spray really well. I've tried General Finishes stains before in their top coats and I really love this product, so I'm excited to try this paint today. And what's really cool about this paint is this is actually a custom color created by my friend Jennifer Beck at Save by Designs Tennessee. If you do not follow her on Instagram, her furniture is absolutely gorgeous. She sells her pieces from $800 to $1,500 to $2,000. She is a true furniture artist refinisher, one of my role models. So I'm excited to try one of her custom colors today. And because she's in Tennessee, this beautiful wine colored color that I'm using today is actually called Arrington. And Arrington is a vineyard that is right down the street from me that we always take family and friends to when they are visiting. It's such a beautiful property, lots of fun music and things happening there. So I'm putting a little bit of Tennessee on my furniture today. Okay, so let's get this paint in my sprayer. I'm using a strainer so that we don't have any bits or globs when I get it into my sprayer. This paint is really thin and in hindsight, I should have not watered it down, but I always water my paint down. So I added just about an ounce of paint to help with its flow. But honestly, I don't think you need to do that. So I probably won't do that next time. And again, I'm using my fine detail nozzle. This is the nozzle that I always use for my furniture flips. I always, always test my sprayer and my settings before I take it to furniture, especially with a new paint like this. And this paint is so much thinner than the other paints I'm used to working with. I'm glad that I did this step because I found that the best setting for this milk paint with it, you know, watered down about 5% is at a one, which is very low. And I have my material flow in the middle, if not more towards the low flow setting. This definitely sprays more like a top coat in my opinion than it does a paint. 
I always like to lay furniture with legs on its back and start spraying the base first before I flip them up to paint them. They're just easier to access the legs when it's laying on its back like this. Like I mentioned earlier, this paint does really well over a raw wood like this. You can also use it on existing finishes. You just wanna make sure that your finish is really clean and that you scuff sand it with a 220 before you add the paint. What's also great about this paint is that it's self sealing. So there is no need to top coat this if it's just a medium use piece like these nightstands. If you're doing cabinets or a tabletop, you'll probably wanna top coat. It sprayed on absolutely beautifully, but again, it is thinner than the paints that I'm used to working with. So I went a little bit quicker with my passes and just made sure that I wasn't overlapping too much so I didn't get any sagging. But just look how fast this goes, you guys. If you are intimidating about spraying, you don't have to be. If I can learn how to do it, anybody can. It's gonna make your projects look so much more professional and it just saves you so much time and it gives you a beautiful smooth finish. Important tips to remember in spraying. I think I go over these every time I spray on here, but you wanna overlap your pattern by about 30 or 50%. You wanna be about six to eight inches away from the furniture that you're working on and try to keep your sprayer at a 90 degree angle. I know sometimes you see me dipping down and not doing that 90 degree angle, but that is gonna give you the best, most even finish. And let's just talk about this beautiful wine color because you know, Better Homes and Gardens said that burgundy was gonna be the color of 2023. Um, 90s is back, you guys, everything 90s is back and burgundy is back with that too. But what you wanna do is not go crazy and paint your whole room burgundy, but doing an accent piece like this, like your nightstands or doing some pillows or a throw is a great way to incorporate burgundy into your own home. You guys, I got this paint on so fast. In total, to paint both of these nightstands, it only took me 20 minutes. I guarantee you if I was doing this by hand, it would have taken me at least an hour and a half. Dry time for this paint is 15 to 30 minutes to the touch. You can sand it after 30 to 45 minutes, and to be able to recoat it, you need to wait two plus hours. After I let this dry for a couple of hours, I came in with a 220 sanding sponge and just sanded it lightly. And this is gonna help you have a smooth finish and help your second coat stick. After I was done sanding, I took a tack cloth and removed all that dust. And then I sprayed that second coat of paint and I do get asked a lot if I clean out my gun in between spraying and I do. I leave it in the canister and put a lid on there but I do clean out the nozzle and the spray intake in between because I don't want that to get dried out or clogged up while my coats are drying. And I did not speed this up at all. I wanted to show you guys in real time just how long it takes to spray. And of course, I wanted to mention that I am spraying in my Wagner pop-up tent. This thing really protects my garage and makes it easy to spray furniture without making a huge mess. It is my top selling item in my Amazon storefront for good reason. And I wanna show you, this is what your paint looks like wet, but it will level out. Everybody always freaks out about that orange peel effect, but trust me, it levels out. I let these guys dry overnight and then I brought them in to finish them off. I'm removing that tape and look how well it protected from that overspray. And now I'm gonna add my new hardware. I got this from Amazon a while ago and I've been dying to use it. How gorgeous are these? They look vintage, but the style is just like a little bit more modern than having that Heppel White pull on there. I am obsessed with these and I think I'll be using them on future furniture flips. Okay, it's time for the big reveal. Remember the desk that we started off with? Well, here it is now is two beautiful burgundy nightstands. Mm -hmm. 
I'm pretty obsessed with this color and you guys know me, I am neutral, but I could definitely see incorporating this beautiful burgundy color into my home. If you wanna check out the custom colors that Jennifer created with general finishes, they're available in her Etsy store and that's gonna be open back up on September 11th. If you wanna shop any of the products that I use today, they're always gonna be down in that description box and you can also click that little view products button in the lower left-hand corner. Thanks for joining me for today's furniture makeover. I will be back with another video soon and I'll see you guys next time. Time.